Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Well, it's barely morning. It's almost noon. So here. Uh, welcome to this live stream. I hope you're doing okay today. Say hello as you pop in. And uh, so I thought today I would paint with the Shades of Summer watercolor set that I am featuring in my upcoming class on making watercolor charts. And I also have some dot cards. If you're interested in these, you can see down below. But um, these lovely M. Graham colors, this whole set is described, essentially each of the colors are described as vibrant, intense, um, vivid, high key, except for sap green, which is a dark color. So anyway, I'm going to paint with these today and um, set those aside so you can see. And I wanted, I decided I would be inspired by a sunset that I saw a couple of days ago. It is summer here. It's been super hot. And this, this was beautiful sunset that I saw at my house. And actually my camera didn't do the best job of capturing it. Um, this blue was a super intense blue in the sky, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I'm going to take this kind of, I think the colors are fitting. So I'm going to take this idea of this sunset and I'm going to just, instead of having the silhouette, I'm just going to have some water at the bottom. It's going to be like sunset on the ocean. So I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I just wanted to try it. And that's my inspiration. And I've got my watercolor brushes. I'm going to use the Bao Hong watercolor paper. This is rough cotton paper and it is really pretty. And I don't know how it's going to behave, how these watercolors will behave on this paper yet. I haven't tried it, but today is the day. Hello, welcome, welcome. Say hello as you pop in here. I love to talk to you guys. Okay, so this is my inspiration. And these are my colors. I have this is this is uh, scarlet pyrrole, bismuth yellow, permanent green, light, sap green, and cobalt teal, which is got to be my favorite in my favorite teal and my favorite M Graham M Graham color all together. So, all right, here we go. My I'll just draw a line for you. My mostly sky. And a little bit of water here. There we go. Now, let's see. So in my inspiration photo, there's a lot of this dark sky. Here at the top, it's a grayish, grayish blue. And then there's all this orangey goodness and some yellow in there. So that's kind of what I'm going for. So in order to make that a dark kind of gray. I'm going to mix complements really, which is this scarlet and this cobalt teal. Whoop, got a nice gray already. I want it to be a blue gray, so I'm adding more of that cobalt teal. And I want it to be nice and juicy and light, so adding more water very very light water and I'm just going to start at the top and this is rough paper and my tape is lifting so let me press that tape down um, this is rough paper so it has a lot of texture and uh, there you can see that texture on there and it is gorgeous so let's play with it my favorite gotta be my favorite American artist Thomas Schaller he paints with this paper and his paintings are amazing. I'm going to leave some spaces for clouds. Again, I'm just being inspired by this. It's not going to look exactly like this for sure. So, but I see some motion motion there and I'll leave some white, little white sparkly bits. Cause even though it's sunset, there's still some sparkle in the sky, right? I'm going to add a little bit more of that as I come down. I'm 
Okay, now I'm just going to go toward my orange, my scarlet pyrrole. I will now also going to add a lot of water to that because look how vibrant it is, but that's not the vibrancy that I want. That's too much. So just adding some water. And you can see my palette's not clean, so my colors will not be perfectly clear, uh, perfectly clear color as in perfectly scarlet pyrrole. I have some other colors mixed in it. I'm okay with that. So let's just do some really sweeping motions with that. This is the sky. I can even go into that wet up in there a little bit to bring it together. There we go. And I want that yellow. Grabbing some of that yellow. I am painting quickly. It's kind of often the way I paint, but also it lets me get the texture of the paper when I do that. So I'm going to add in more water and soften that as it comes down. And soften pretty much everything in this is really soft. All those clouds are really soft. There are no really distinct clouds. There are some darker areas and that sort of thing, but mostly it's very soft. So I'm going to go for subtle. Keep in mind also that these colors, oh, look at that color. It's just amazing. <laughs> these colors will also dry lighter. So I want them a little more intense than I think that they should be. Dropping that in, creating some little sweeping color there. All right, there we go. That is just, look at that, that's gorgeous. And I'm going to carry this down. In my photo, it shows a lot of blue. Um, well, when I was looking at it outside, it was a lot of blue, very intense blue, but I don't have that in this palette. And so I'm just not going to worry about that really. I'm just going to make a soft uh, orangey yellow orangey yellow here and just continue my sky down to the water so I'm just dropping in some so the clouds were just this gorgeous orange and coral color and that's just great for this color palette it was very summery for sure it is very summery <laughs> and then drop in some more intense yellow here Oh, my brush was very wet. So I also dropped in a lot of water when I did that. One thing about it, these colors do work really well together, particularly this orange and yellow here. So love that okay now let's go for that turquoise it's a turquoise ocean I'll mix in a little bit of that green and make it have that green ocean feel mixed in as well I'll do that closer to the bottom and if it mixes here at the sky skyline that's actually perfect because well, that's just the way it is. Let's put a little bit of reflection. Oh, that was perfectly green. <laughs> Not what I intended, that's okay. Put a little bit of that reflected, reflected yellow and a little bit reflected orange here in the water. And just keep going with that turquoise and gorgeous colors. So one thing about it, these and colors are very intense, but you can get such light color mixes with them because all you have to do is add water. And you may also notice I didn't have to pre-wet. I did not pre-wet anything in my palette. And that just means they re-wet really easy. And that's the honey. That is the honey in them. I'm leaving some spaces here in between. I'm looking up at my other camera. It looks beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna go more intense here at the bottom. 
I also want to just, I'm going to use the side of my brush so I can catch the texture of that paper and make some beautiful white sparkly bits. <laughs> I love sparkles, so. I'm going to put, who knows what's in the distance there. I want that to just fade and blend in a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to this, adding a little bit of that permanent green light. And dropping that in in places. It's a really nice, really nice ocean color there. This makes me want to go to the beach. Of course, I always want to go to the beach. <laughs> Look at that. That is gorgeous. Um, drop in a little more orange here. Maybe even a little bit more intense orange. Just to add some. This is still kind of wet, so I can add that in and let it flow around a bit. And soften that. Wow, this is beautiful. So the nice thing about this bao hong paper is this is a, a block so it's all glued on all the sides i just put down my tape here on the side so it kind of helps it all stay in place let's do some more intense color here sort of mimic some of the intense color in the sky but it's the, the turquoise And the green. Now anytime I introduce more water in here um, because it's already drying. Oh, apologize. My dog's barking. Well, actually it's my daughter's dog. In any case, anytime I introduce more water, it may push the pigments around and we'll get those effects like the blooms and things like that. I am okay with that. I love those effects actually. So, perfect. What do you think? Not quite as intense as my photo. Nevertheless, it's got some of those colors in there. We can bring in more of this orange. This, this is all still wet. The more I introduce, the more it's going to kind of Like I said, push the paints around. I don't want my brush to be too wet. This is pretty dry, so see how it's not really moving at all. So I'll just add water in. I want that to be a little bit more. A little bit more color mixed in. I actually really do love the soft use you can get oh and the intensity so that makes these paints very versatile. I usually just let my paints dry. I don't usually do the, um, like a hair dryer or anything. So it'll be a little bit before these dry. I'm just trying to add a little more texture in the sky there. 
I just came from watching my friend's live demo. Her name is Lisa, and she has a great explanation of granulation. So I want to ask the question. So if you're interested in learning more about granulation, just go check out her video. She painted a really pretty watercolor card and um, it's just really gorgeous colors, vibrant, and beautiful. And um, she's just such an amazing artist and card maker. So go check her out. I'll leave that link in the discussion below. You can go check out her channel. Subscribe if you want to, if you like what she's doing. But she does give a good explanation. Someone asked the question about what are granulating watercolors. And she gave a great explanation. So, I, I, I mean, it'd be worth going to check that out. Okay, so let me add in a little bit more toned down of this Scarlet Pyrrole. Toned down with the Cobalt Teal. So... You notice how super vibrant it can be, but if you take in a little bit, I did the opposite before. I used the cobalt, I used the scarlet pyrrole to turn tone down the cobalt teal. Now I'm doing the opposite. I'm using the cobalt teal to tone down this scarlet pyrrole. That'll just add in some depth that we wouldn't necessarily have otherwise, and some shadows in the clouds, if you want to call it that. I was seeing that move out like that too. You can see also did a little bit of over. And so I have a lot of texture in the sky. Well, let's go back to this. I want to intensify that upper area. Again, I want it to be toned down. My petals all gone, but that's okay. I can just take this and add it in. Oh yeah, look at that. Again, dry as lighter. I just want to go across the top, really. There you go, just to make that top darker. And to draw your eye. It'll draw your eye. Just, there's a little little thing. Okay. If you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. But yeah, so this now is a very intense sky. And I've used I haven't used the sap green, but I've used all the other colors. I don't feel like I need to use the sap green here. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to. A little bit more of this, just, just inside of my brush. Again, I'm taking advantage of that texture of this paper. And this toned down color is actually also good to go here on the horizon line. Not solid, but mixed in there. Okay, so I think that I would probably just try and add a, a bird or two. I use this really light color. I like to add birds with a really light color, so. Actually, I can do it with this brush, but it'll be easier to do it with a different brush. So let me get a smaller brush. Here's a rigger. I'm using the um, Prince and Neptune brushes today. So, and I'm, well, I think I'm almost finished with this painting, at least for today. I may change it up later, but yeah. So I like to use a light color to start to make birds because that way, yeah. They're not like super, I don't know. They don't take so much attention, I guess. And then also if I don't like it, I can just remove it. I heard one artist say that a, a bird is just a check mark. 
<laughs> that's a little bit light so you can't see it but I can drop in the pigment now to make it darker I'm going for that gray again a light gray so bird is just like a check mark in the sky <laughs> there we go and it's still wet so it's moving out a little bit and where it's dry you can see it stays in place. In some places, like here, it's too wet. It just moved everywhere. I don't want to put too many birds, just a few. Some tiny ones. They're far away. Kind of darker on one side than the other. Okay, so I am going to wrap this up now. I think this is really pretty. The colors are really pretty, and it kind of, you know, it does justice to our inspiration. I think it's kind of a combo inspiration, and it was fun to play with this paper and these colors. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this painting and I hope you'll try it yourself. Um, and just see what happens. Play with your colors, play with your paints. The main thing with watercolor is just try to enjoy the process. Let go, loosen up, have fun. And almost like magic, you will improve your watercolor. So one more thing. And that is to remove this tape. There's something magical also about removing the tape. <laughs> so even though this paper kind of resisted the tape at first, it did really well making a nice, beautiful edge. Okay, thank you for joining me. I'll see you soon. Bye.